What is the biggest particle in the soil, guys? No, biggest particle. Sand. Sand. Wait, okay, this is my big sand. Which is the next one? Sill. Sill, very good. And which is the tiniest one? Okay, it's clay. Okay, now this has gone through heck. You can tell when it goes all over the country, it takes a beating. Okay, this is my this is my big sand particle. This is my hyphae. This is my hyphae fungus. And this is my root hair. Okay. Have you ever thought about how does soil keep the particles from not collapsing? What holds them up? Well, here's my glues, guys. Fungus. The bacteria as they're carrying off their Woo! Man, I'm really having a good time. I can't believe I can pay for this. <laughs> so you see, our aggregate, our soil really is the byproducts of metabolism. As they're carrying out their work, they're creating these glues. The roots, the fungus, the hyphae, all these critters are doing that. That's what keeps the pore space open in the soil. When those glues are not there, it collapses. That's what's happening. You cannot have that. This is an ecosystem. It's called the porosphere. How many of you have heard about the porosphere? Cool, huh, I am. You can go back and say, hey, I'm a porous here. People are going to be impressed. They go, whoa. Okay, so it's the glues are very important, okay? That just gives you a visual. They're the ones that keep things in the space. Now, let's get going. Now, I'm gonna, like you said, I'm an, I'm an agronomist. Let's see if I got this right. I'm at the Tech Center. I'm located in North Carolina. Uh, they let me loose. I usually, my responsibility is supposed to be the eastern part of the states, but they let me loose and I get to go all over the country. And as soon as I can spread it to every farmer and rancher, I'm going to do it. And so here we go. Let's see if I can work, work this without hurting myself. Um, Mary, where are you? It's got too many buttons. Those two, it's not working. Procedure. Huh? Oh no. Jack, I'm not smart enough to come up with this. This took years. Well, this demo, it was a collaborative effort. In some ways I did, but the slate test has been around for a long time with scientists all over the country, all over the world. Brilliant scientists. The slate test, scientists came up with that. It wasn't right. I just did it in a way that is very visual, and I use it as a tool. To teach. Got it? Hey, you did. What'd you do? I hit the computer. Okay, let me, well, I'll stand yeah. on here. Unfortunately, I like to go all over the place and make this work. Okay, what are we going to learn? We're going to learn today how physical, chemical, and biological disturbance impacts soil function. What was one that we already talked about? Physical disturbance. Tillage is a disturbance. How soil impacts soil function, soil biology. We're going to talk about case studies throughout the country. I'm going to give you a little bit today, but tomorrow I'm going to really feed you about and show you uh, case studies all over the country. And we're going to talk about the common management principles that these incredible farmers are doing. Not just farmers, but also researchers are coming to realize this. This is, this is spreading through the whole country. Oops. Soil health, soil quality. It's the capacity of a specific kind of soil to function. That's the key word. Function. I want you to notice that's really interesting about, about this. Look at that with the natural managed ecosystem boundaries, but guess what it does? It's the same plant, animal productivity, enhanced water, air quality, human health, and habitation. It's almost like it touches everything, does it not? In fact, I will argue today you came in contact in some way and form with microbes. You've got microbes inside you. In fact, when you ate a piece of that cake and fruit, if it wasn't for the microbes, you wouldn't have those nutrients in that fruit. It's very connected. So we're going to talk about how that is incredibly important is to understand soil function. These are the five broad ecological functions. Sustained biological diversity. I changed it last, last night, I mean this morning. It regulates water and um, solute flow. You can read that yourself. I'm not going to go over it. But I want to focus one thing here. 
It's a habitat to many living organisms. Our job is to make that habitat really happy. And the more you make that habitat real happy, the more money you make. Here we go. My first slide is an iceberg. A lot of times we focus on the top part here, but there's so much more that we don't focus on. I tell farmers, context, context, context is so <laughs> critical. When I come and I'm invited to go to your place, I look at your place from an ecological context, I look at your place from a global context, and from a national context. What do I mean by that? It's all about context. What I mean by that is when I look, I look at it from an ecosystem and see everything's connected, and I'm going to assume, unless proven otherwise, you have a degraded soil system. We have been tilling and diminishing our soils for the last couple hundred years. I can tell it doesn't take very long to find out, figure out where you're at. From a national context and from a global context, it's no longer about your farm. It's about the world. It's about China, it's about India, all using these resources. And we have to understand, when we make decisions, are we looking at things from a global, national context, and are you, more importantly, are you looking at it from an ecological